Welcome, everyone, to Delicious and Nutritious. Uh, this is Chef Jerry and, uh, and our, with our nutritionist, uh, Marsha. And uh, we are want to thank uh, Beth uh, Israel Deaconess uh, and uh, PAC TV and the Center for Active Living. Today, we are going to do a, a recipe that is called Chicken Mediterranean Serve with Orchietta Pasta. Orchietta is a, a, a little pasta, looks like a scoop, like a half a clam shell. Uh, Marsha, would you like to say hello? I would love to say hello. It's wonderful to see everybody. The Mediterranean diet is my favorite um, style of eating. And I'm looking forward to talking a little bit more about that after we see this delicious recipe that Jerry is gonna make. I am from BID Plymouth. We are doing this um, delicious and nutritious program as a collaboration between BID Plymouth, PAC TV, and the Center for Active Living in Plymouth. And we're so happy to have all of you here. So let's watch this recipe. Thank you. 
That was amazing. So now we know how to make it. Let's take a look at some of the nutritional benefits associated with this awesome recipe. So I'm just gonna talk for a few minutes about the Mediterranean diet. This is Mediterranean chicken. So the Mediterranean pyramid, this comes from Old Ways, which is a company in Boston, right on Beacon Street. They have an awesome website. I encourage you all to take a look. You can find some more awesome recipes. But if you notice the base of the Mediterranean way of eating is exercise and socializing, then our eating patterns should be rich in fruits and vegetables and grains, mostly whole grains, olive oil, beans, nuts, legumes, seeds, herbs, and spices. Many of the things that we just saw in Jerry's recipe. Then we should be having fish and seafood as a primary protein source. We should try to have fish and seafood twice a week. Then mix in poultry, eggs, cheeses, and yogurts. The least amount of things that we should be having in our diet is meats, red meats that are high in saturated fats and also sweets. So take a look at the amount of sugar that might be in products that you're purchasing as well. A lot of health benefits associated with the Mediterranean diet. 
Weight loss and weight management definitely lowers your risk of heart disease and high blood pressure. It has been associated with cancer prevention as well as other chronic diseases like heart disease and diabetes. Also been shown to reduce asthma. A lot of the foods are anti-inflammatory, helps to manage diabetes and blood sugar, and also resists depression. There's more and more research on um, the effects of eating this type of a diet on a healthy um, mental status as well. And it's a great way to nurture healthier babies. So all of us throughout our lifespan should be eating this way. Some ways that you can incorporate this diet, eight quick steps, eat lots of vegetables, change the way you think about meat. It should be an accompaniment versus the meal. Enjoy some dairy products, choose low fat, whether it be cheese, milk, yogurt, have that seafood twice a week, any kind of seafood. It does not have to be salmon or tuna. It can be any seafood at all. Ranch out, try, try, try a new type of fish. Try a vegetarian meal once a week. Have a bean chili or a bean fajita or um, tofu stir fry. Use good fats like olive oil, canola oil, and some of those nut butters. Switch to whole grains. At least 50% of the grains that you eat should be from whole grains. So whole grain toast or crackers or cereals or even pasta. And try having fruit for dessert. Get your sweet that way. Um, fruit is rich in nutrients and natural sweetness. So try to get into the habit of that being a dessert versus a sweet all the time. Some quick substitutions you can try. If you put mayonnaise on a sandwich right now, maybe try hummus or an avocado spread. If you put butter on your toast, maybe try olive oil or a nut butter or even avocado. If you put meat in your pasta sauce, why not put some vegetables in there? Try some carrots, mushrooms, peppers, onions. If you like chocolate cake, maybe try a baked pear and yogurt sauce. And if you like um, bagels with jam or jelly, maybe try an overnight oats or oatmeal with some berries or Greek yogurt and granola. That's what I had for breakfast this morning and it was absolutely delicious. Check out Old Ways, oldwayspt.org for more great information and also great recipes. And I think, um, we can go to questions um, or Jerry, I don't know if there's anything you wanted to comment on first. There are several questions in the chat box. I would be happy to answer the questions, but before I do that, I want Marsha to stump the chef. Oh, my favorite part of the show. All right, so can you tell us the difference between a chicken and a Cornish game hen? Yes, I can. A Cornish game hen is just a small chicken. And the bottom line to all of this is that uh, because a Cornish game hen weighs about a pound, maybe a little bit more, a chicken on the average is probably going to be about three to four pounds. And, and these are, of course, the roasting chickens are larger. But the Cornish game hen is essentially a small chicken. It doesn't... Um, it's harvested relatively early, but it is delicious. It has very low fat. And whatever you can do with a chicken, you can do with a Cornish game hen. Two things to remember. Turn the heat down a little bit. Uh, instead of cooking at 425 for a, a regular chicken, bring it down to 375 or 400 and watch the time. The best thing to do, as I always say, is Take your thermometer and get 165 degrees into the, the breast meat or the thickest part of the bird, and, and that's it. So it's delicious. Try it. Don't be afraid of it. <laughs> there we go. So now we're all experts on um, the var varietals of chickens, and chicken is a great lean protein. Um, so let's check. There was some questions coming in. I was kind of responding as I went along. 
So, um, so Jerry, on the recipe, it does say olive oil, but we noticed that you used canola oil. Is it okay for people to use olive oil? Uh, you can use olive oil because you, if you noticed that I was cooking with a relatively low heat. Yeah. Uh, if, if I were doing a stir fry, I would, you, you'll notice that I was turning the heat down periodically. If I was doing a stir fry, I've had the heat on extremely high and I would be using canola, uh, but they can be both used. It all depends upon the flavor profile. Canola is a neutral oil. Olive oil tastes like olives. Yep, so either one is gonna be fine. So thank you very much, Pat Patricia, for that question. And another question was, do we wash basil and how do we dry it? Okay, that's a fine question. Washing basil, uh, most, most of these, th these uh, most, most of uh, these things such as basil and oregano, they're already pre-washed. Now, the washing is not going to get rid of any pesticides, herbicides, or anything like that. It will get rid of any sand if it happens to be on the, um, on the basil. Yes, you can wash it. Uh, I don't think you really have to be crazy about trying to dry it because just take it and, and, and uh, uh, toss it a little bit in your hands over the sink and any moisture that clings to it is going to be fine because it's going to be cooked anyway. So, okay. and it'll evaporate. Perfect. Um, so Marie asks, can we have copies of the presentation? Yes, I will put them in the chat when I'm all done. Um, and what about the pasta water creating a sauce? So we okay. could add some of that pasta water too, right? Usually when I cook pasta, I always leave about a cup of the pasta water after I drain the pasta. The reason for that is that if I don't think that the sauce is liquid enough, mm -hmm. then I will pour in a little bit of the pasta water. And the pasta water does two things. One is it makes it more liquid, but it also has starch in there. So it's gonna thicken it a little bit. Uh, there are times when I won't put any pasta water in because that's, I think it's thick enough. Yeah, it's going to matter on how much moisture was in there. Um, I noticed the amount of dried pasta in the recipe is enough for four people. A single serving is 56 grams or half cup. This may be what is driving up the total cup. So I did take a look at the recipe and the totals that are listed on the recipe are for two servings. And these are hefty servings. Um, you all saw the amount of food that it created. So um, you're, you're absolutely right, Sheila. I'm gonna put you on staff as my assistant dietitian. <laughs> <laughs> um, so any other, so there is one other comment that Jerry, I think that you're gonna love to see. Um, I couldn't wait and made the dish last night. It came out so good. Thank you so much for this. So, I love it. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much for sharing that, that it was so good. So um, this is time for us to say goodbye. And we'd like to thank all of our participants, PAC TV, BID Plymouth, the Center for Active Living. Without all of you, delicious and nutritious would not be possible. And Jerry and I hope you enjoyed this month's recipe. And we hope you do try to make it yourself and we wish you a happy and a healthy day.